Today I'm going to explore what would happen if stage one works is completed. There is the concept of the 10 rural land sharing communities and the one lot for the village. So the concept is to take these 21 current title lots and turn them into 11 lots. 10 for a rural land sharing community and one for the village. Now most people are fairly able to understand what a registered plan looks like. They're very neat and ordered and the only squiggles you get through them, like in this instance, the boundaries will follow row, um, rivers and of course roads this, these ones through here was the old Cobb & Co coach road and they have actually been bought up, well supposedly bought up by NCV Enterprises but since NCV Enterprises only own these two lots any of those ones that would be on Peter Van Leishout's land in the other lots he would have bought them up because, well, I don't see how NCV Enterprises could take them up into the lots that they currently own, like as it is when they um, put the enclosure on them to say that everything is enclosed now fully within that. So, as you can see, it's very ordered. There's 21 uh, lots within the all of the... Uh, nightcap on Minjimbal development. Now as you can also see is that they also like to do straight lines as the the crow flies and when they <laughs> the reason I even have to state this is because when I show you how they would intend to turn these 21 lots into 11 uh, it's <laughs> it's amazing really is amazing especially when you consider how much work that would actually involve with a surveyor because each one of these lines has to be surveyed surveyors pegs go in the ground so that if at any stage that the surveyors can come back and identify boundaries, you know, like if people want to put up fences or anything like that, or if there's a dispute, all of these things are surveyed and they're very precise and exact. So that's why they tend to do them in straight lines and the only time that they don't do that is when they're accommodating for roads or rivers. So I've opaqued this one so that you can't actually see what's um, underneath. So I'm going to make it a little bit more clearer. Now <laughs> what you're looking at underneath here, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to keep a straight face because it's it looks like a kid has actually produced this and has got actually no clue on what is involved from surveyors and how many millions it's probably going to cost. Now I won't completely fade it out but uh, as you can see here all those straight lines I want you to start looking at all the jagged edges in the colors underneath. All those jagged edges actually represent the new title boundaries that they would want to make. These coloured representations make up 11 lots and as you can see there's very few straight lines in there. Let's take this overlay off and have a look at the total lot of them. Wow! <laughs> now if you were a surveyor and you were looking at that you would have a nightmare um, you'd know that it involved so much work because they work in straight lines. They don't work in dog legs, all of this. But as you go along and you look at all of this, you actually realize that this is done very specifically. 
because they've got a number of houses along in this area and they are only just having enough land uh, let me show you hang on we'll go down to all right so if you look at this this comes off page 48 of DA 21-0010 their statement of environmental effects now if you look over here that all these lots that are underneath here 11 of them that area well we won't worry about the village this one says 400 po uh, sorry 200.1 42.5 is the SCPP calculation so in other words that's a density of dwellings 42.5 well you can't have 0.5 of a, of a dwelling so they put in 42 then we've got 62.3 62 so ultimately if they didn't maneuver all these things around like look at the way this lot is taken up right so you go up around here all the way up around here and it goes all the way over here and into there that's one lot this one here goes all the way around all the way down through there then back here all the way around that's another lot this one here look that weaves in around here comes down here leaves out that little bit in the middle and that comes all the way up and weaves in that tucks in over there and it comes up over here and then it goes up and around here too that's so that they can maximize the number of houses on each lot that they've created but when you actually look at is this seriously what you actually expect a surveyor to create as far as titles are concerned now we've seen the images of the straight lines it is a requirement that these things are done in a neat and precise order not all dog leggy over the place let's let's twist it up and around that bit i mean seriously why couldn't you just not bring that all up around there why couldn't you have just gone around there oh hang on if you included that area there then these areas that you've got houses in that would cause a density problem and likewise here so you've you've gradually thinned the land out into every little area to squeeze out and twist and contort it to oh look look yep we can get 42.5 houses there or we can get 60.3 there all right you can't you can't go up to past 54 but yeah now when it comes to all these lots only two lots are actually current uh, currently owned by ncv enterprises 16 lots are proposed to be bought by ncv enterprises of Peter Van Lyshout. But that also leaves these two lots over here. This one here that will be made into its, well, it won't be made into its own separate area. It already is. It's on its own title and Peter Van Lyshout owns it. And he will continue to own it no matter what happens with Nightcap on Minjimble. And it's the same with where Dolph Cook is over here except it looks like they may have to do a few boundary modifications there because um, his actually comes over in the square if I put that um, back on you will actually see that let's have a look so as you can see his tidal boundary comes down there and up around there and over there so they would actually propose to shrink his boundary slightly and to take off this so that this area then could maximize the number of dwellings per lot i mean it still doesn't get around the issue of that what they're proposing is to use multiple lots not single lots but anyway let, let's just say that that they could even get that first they've got to resurvey the land and if this is how they want to resurvey it 
I can tell you they've got a snowball's chance in hell of actually achieving this. What town planner, um, council planner, surveyor in their department would accept moving the boundary titles uh, to this position? For what reason? Because it not only takes work from the surveyors to actually create those physical boundaries, it also takes work at the council to actually put those physical boundaries into a scaled registered plan map. This is not what they work with. This is like a, a jigsaw puzzle that has been ripped up into too many pieces and um, someone's trying to patch it back together again. It's, it's actually taking very organised and ordered structure in the 21 existing titles and turning it into, well, the only reason it does look like this, as I've said, is that they're trying, even if they wanted 10 rural land sharing communities in here, they can still only apply those 10 as the land lot of a single lot. There can be no more than 80 dwellings. And this is the advice that they have actually received from solicitors. I've seen this advice where they've said you cannot achieve the desired density on this development. That if you are using 21 lots, if you could argue it that it is a single lot, you can still only have 80 dwellings because it's classified as a single lot. You can't say, well, right, of these, this single lot, there's 10 lots that actually make it up. So each lot allows up to 80 dwellings. So we're going to go with the maximum on that. And then we're going to go and resurvey all the tidal borders and we're going to get that all changed to council so that we can maximise what each one of those single lots would have. When the advice that they've been given consistently is that you cannot achieve it. The state environmental planning policy is very, very clear. Single lot. So if you wanted to apply all of those lots and say, well, look, just pretend they're a single lot. But they're not. They are not single. They are multiple lots. And therefore, they do not even meet the, the requirement that it be a single lot. Then you take the further proposition of where they want to take those ordered title boundaries and move them into this hodgepodge of a jigsaw puzzle that seriously, the council aren't going to let you do that. You can't just go and say, well, right, look, all this land's under my control now. I'm going to move the border here. I'm going to move the border there. You've got to get permission and it's got to be accepted like anything else. So can it realistically be achieved even the way that they want to change the tidal boundaries? Uh, I'd say no. I'd say that the council would not let them move the current boundaries into the desired location. It, it, and for a surveyor to go through there and move all the boundaries, I couldn't imagine. I mean, surely my head is thinking millions, millions that it would cost in time to... Like, as a, you see that they're used to working in straight lines and they're slow enough as it is. Could you imagine if they've got to go couple of hundred metres and then they've got to do a dog leg and then they've got to turn back and they've got to come back here and then they've got to go up here and then they're, ah, oh, for crying out loud, it would take them years and it would cost millions. But then you've got the issue too that the state environmental planning policy doesn't actually allow you to subdivide. So you can't actually subdivide any of this under the state environmental planning policy, you have to keep it at 
21 lots. You cannot subdivide, it's prohibited. It's a heading all into itself. It is very, very clear. No subdivision. So you get to the roads being put in, then you get to, we want to subdivide into these lots. Again, no subdivision. Again, not single lots. But let's just say that none of those issues existed and that wouldn't make it a dead in the water project. But um, they get to the stage of, all right, we're going to put in our rural land sharing communities now. And they go to put in a development application and the planning portal will not accept it will not accept it because it is proposing to use the rural land sharing clause of the state environmental planning policy and it doesn't apply to the Tweed Shire Council because in the time it's taken you to construct your roads they've removed themselves from the state environmental planning policy. So you've got as far as you know, you've got your ordered 21 lots, you've got your roads upgraded, you're ready to do your subdivision, which the state environmental planning policy pro prohibits. You're ready to turn 21 multiple lots into still 11 multiple lots. Again, still not the single lot as per the provision. But then you've got the big hurdle of well, now that provision doesn't even apply in the Tweed Shire because they are no longer under that schedule. And that's it. That's the end of the project. Now you can say, no, 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 that's not going to happen. Well, yes, 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 yes. The council are very dedicated to getting rid of themselves from the state environmental planning policy. They wanted to take control over what goes on in their shire. And they're very adamant about that. They've been putting their efforts into it. They've sought legal advice. They've taken their legal position and they will be ensuring that they do not get passed across to any resurrection or new vehicle of you know the next version the next version of the SCPP might be 2021 and if the Tweed Shire Council get in quick enough they won't even be on it and that's that's as simple as it gets even if you had none of these major issues of trying to do subdivision where it's prohibited trying to apply multiple lots to a single lot, trying to then say, well, yes, it is a single lot with multiple parts, but then we're going to use the multiple parts to apply it to the dwellings so that we can maximise the dwellings. They couldn't actually get any more than 392 dwellings on there. Believe me, they would have tried. With all this dog-legging around, they've actually got it to the maximum that they could possibly do you know they would have had oh look let's try that so it's here and it's like no we're still we're losing out on houses here we don't have enough land now to put them in I mean why would you even have that little bit in there why would you just not make it a simple slot off because there's not enough land to make up the density of the dwellings that they want and that's even if they could apply um, a single lot dwelling to a multiple lot rural land sharing. Well, it's not a community, it's communities where they intend to create cliques. Cliques of mindsets where people can block themselves off because well, people like Tyler Tolman don't want to smell your barbecue or you know that I don't want to be involved with certain things. So already there's that, I don't want to be part of the others in the community. Setting up in opposition even to those that you would supposedly be building a community with. And yeah, it's just amazing to me that this, when I really looked at this, 
and how they propose to do it. I could not imagine, well, I don't know, I could imagine that if they went to a surveyor and said, we want you to give us a cost on making the borders look like this, I think they'd laugh at them. I really do. Uh, I don't see any serious surveyor actually having the expectation that this kind of a design would actually get past council planning. I don't see why council would suddenly turn their nice, neat, ordered little lots that are easily defined into this that is going to create a lot of problems. And especially if it creates a lot of problems where the ownership of lots is actually changed and divided the way that it is with the current 21 lots. Imagine if each one of those lots then had someone b owning each one of those 21 lots. Now I want to bring this up again because um, when I looked at this, what we've got here is a table of existing lots and the proposed lots. So here are the existing 21 lots, 21 lots area 1584. They then intend to turn it into 11 lots area 1584. Well, there's only one problem with that. That if you calculate all that land, you actually come up with 1620.46 hectares. Not 1,584. Now the two areas of discrepancy as you go through and you apply their titles to the land, which I've done here, I've also been able to gauge areas. And with those areas, I've been able to identify that lot two and lot five are incorrect. And I've been able to identify that simply because the polygon size that I have created is within, let's just say, well usually it's one or two, sometimes it's spot on. In this big orange circumstance it was three hectares out. I could have bordered in a bit and made it down to two, but this is, I'm not a surveyor, I'm not applying this to the real time of the real land, these are just getting a, an estimate of how these things look. So all along, this 200.1 on lot two, let's have a look at that, actually works out that they have 36 dwellings noted on their map that shows all these subdivision that they want to do. But they've also said on that table that I just showed you that they wanted to achieve 42 dwellings, the SEPP calculation being 42.5. So my polygon size for this lot is considerably smaller. It's 143 hectares as opposed to 200.1. And as I showed you before, trimming off down the bottom there of Dolph's block and that corner as well. But that has not been taken off. That has been left as is. Because part of that is now part of this area and this area to make up the land requirement for the density of housing. And it's all around the density of housing. So that's an error there. And lot five. Now, lot five, the polygon, again, they said is 42.2 hectares. My polygon size is 65.3. That is way, way out, way, way too big. As I said, my variance is, you know, point 0.1 or it's two, one or two either way. It's not that much of a variance because you cannot take their scaled map and put it onto this and then come up with those differences 
unless they've first made the mistake. And as I showed you here, anyone can do this. I did this over and over again. In the end, I put it into an Excel document and I did an auto tally because I just th thought I kept pushing the wrong number somewhere. But no, 1,620.46 hectares, not 1,584. Now, to me, this is a very simple thing that when you are working with figures, they should add up. You should ensure that your figures add up. They don't. So how can they take these existing lots and turn them into these proposed lots and come up with all those extra hectares? Well, they haven't come up with extra hectares. They've made a mistake. The mistake is in lot 2 and lot 5, which is these two here. Because this one here, well, I'll just put that on again. Hang on. So as you can see, this one here, that what that is the current title, that's nice and neat. This blue bit down here is now proposed to be part of that other lot. And this bit over here intends to be part of this red lot. So it's greatly reduced that down without any alteration to the size of the actual lot. So they haven't realized that their subdivision is actually going to do that in that it's still showing 200.1 when it's not it's been reduced and you can clearly see that and again you can see that their calculation of this lot is less because they haven't added in what is extra there so i'm asking with all the calculations that they've actually made with figures and everything like that how much can we guarantee that they actually have given the right information i mean when i show you that even a simple thing like this there's 11 numbers there to add up do it add them up and see if it equals 1584 it's a simple thing that anybody does with figures. You always ensure your figures add up. Always. Because if they don't balance, nothing else that you've relied upon that information with will balance either. And this is where they're saying we can get 42 dwellings out of it, when on the map there's only 36 marked. So already the total of 392 dwellings that they want to achieve can't be achieved because that should actually be 36 dwellings. But, you know, I mean, really, what have they actually put forward that balances, that actually is clear, there's no mistakes? If you check all the information, it's always a matter of, yep, yeah, just tick, 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 tick. Everything you go through in here, it's just like a great big whopping cross. And you put a fail on it and send it back and say, look, do it properly. Add up your numbers. And how they even said here that the dwellings achievable with those 21 lots was 410 wrong. The dwellings that were achievable with all of those lots that make up one single lot is 80. And it doesn't matter whether you shift it over onto this side and make less lots out of it, it still has to be considered as one single lot. And that is the advice that they have been given. I actually have that document too. And another question that should actually be asked is why did they leave 
Daryl Anderson consulting town planner and moved to Planet. Well, there was a lot of things that came from Daryl Anderson consulting. They basically said, you can't do what you want to do because of water catchment and other issues. And they weren't happy with that. So they went and found someone that would not even know how to add up numbers and check to make sure that they are 1,584. Oh dear, I tell you that the more you look at things, the more you realise is that seriously, how did they even get to this level? How could they even spend millions to try and even get to this level with such... Um, poor representation of the accuracy of the situation because not only that we've got there they have moved uh misty mountains over here misty mountains that's in this area the cabins to this little strip that goes down here yeah that's where they are now the misty mountains cabins and camping sites and the amenities that are over here too they're now over here on this little strip over here. It's got nothing to do with where the developable areas are. These are just such careless errors considering that they've quoted the development application that's given approval for Misty Mountains Cabins that's got lot 4 DP 737440 on it and they put it on lot 2 on some other DP that I don't know <laughs> off the top of my head but it's a completely different lot and DP number how do you make a mistake like that how can you when you've got the development application approval in front of you you know which lot it's attached to and that's where I say that so many of these mistakes that are made is it incompetence is it deliberate or <laughs> seriously if you can get away, if you can make money out of selling this kind of work, shit, I should be doing this. <laughs> because, yeah, I could do a lot better work and uh, it would actually come within the legal boundaries of what's required rather than... I, I don't know any town plan that looks like this. I don't even know any council that would actually accept anything that looked like this unless these were the contours around a lake. You know, they have to put in the contours around waterways and roads or anything like that. So other than that, why would they even do it? Or is this following a creek and they've decided that the creek will be the boundary? I don't know. But the thing being that I don't see a surveyor wanting to even attempt anything like that. Why would you? I mean, it's not even a logical way of... Cons see, why not make that bit part of, as I said? But again, as I've said, it's all designed to move it around and push it up here and out there as much as they possibly could so that they can get the maximum density out of it. And even the areas that they propose to keep this area up here for, um, you know, environmental protection and rehabilitation, it still include they want to still include it in a lot that's part of density for, well, for density for dwellings and to actually currently build and block off the current wildlife corridor. I mean, they've just got so many issues with this development application and then when you actually start to look at what they want to achieve, if, if they got stage one, all right, what's next? Stage two, title um, rearrangement subdivision in the SCPP where it's not even allowed but yeah let's imagine that it is allowed and that they could even possibly even think to do it how did they want that to look oh dear me I tell you isn't it just such a mess of what they actually want it to look like it is not 
ordered, it is not tidy, and as I said, I do not even see the council saying, if you put that plan and saying, I want to get in surveyors to turn the current registered maps into this, I'm sorry, but they'd probably laugh at you too. <laughs> but then again, you've probably already put it to them and they just think, well, you know what? We won't even deal with that issue because you're not going to get to that stage of redeveloping the tidal boundaries because you're not even going to get past stage one. And even if you did get approval for stage one, so what? You can't can't get it past there. And what you've done is spend $18 million to knock down too many trees, to devastate the environment too much, but you've upgraded the roads that nobody will use. Well, there's still a lot of people that use them, isn't there? And will continue to use them, even when the rural land sharing community goes in, because of the 4x4 adventure park that Peter Van Lyshout still intends to utilise this area for. So, take a good look at how they would reorganise the tidal boundaries and ask yourself, in what illusion do they have? Do they think that any of that would ever be realistically achievable in cost, time and even the permissibility of the council saying, yeah, sure, go ahead and turn the titles into that because that just that just makes so much sense yeah <laughs> anyway I think that's enough on their <laughs> their jigsaw puzzle and I'll leave it for that today <laughs> catch you next time bye <laughs>